Hi, I'm Steve Berry and I'm here in my happy place, or Lancashire as the Ordnance Survey people like to call it. More specifically, I am at Asset Realisation Services Limited, catchy name, and they're the people who put together car and classic bike sales in this part of the world. They've got lots of great kit in their forthcoming sale, like this rather magnificent Bentley Turbo R. It's not black, it's actually a very, very, very dark blue. And in the words of Hugh McGregor, don't tell me you're not tempted. Right, Nathan, as ever, an eclectic selection of vehicles. Let's just uh, talk about a few that have caught my eye, some of the more unusual offerings. Yep. That Ford, what, is, what even is it? It's a South African import. It's, it's sort of a South African part, it's been car, if you will, based on Ford stuff. It's a model's a 20M and it's a 3000S, so it's got a V6. I can't remember whether it's an Essex or a Cologne engine in it, but it's, it's got the three litre V6 Ford engine in it. It's in very good order. I mean, it's what? It's on a H plate, so it's... No. It's 40 odd years old, yeah, but it's yeah. in really good order, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very nice car. It's well presented. Uh, and the, the sort of detail that's gone into it with the wheels, the way they've been prepared. It's a very nice thing. And I, I warrant that there's probably only that one in this country, to yeah. be honest. I've no, not, like I say, not only have I never seen one, no. I've never even heard of that car. I've heard of the Ford Mondeo, but this one is a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, they've, they've sort of gone mental with it, really. It's got a massive supercharger fitted under the bonnet. Uh, it's, uh, it's doing circa 350 upwards horsepower, and it spits flames when it's warm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you ask for? <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the more conventional choices. What a lovely thing this is. British performance engineering at its finest, the Lotus Elise. This is a later one, isn't it? Yep, this, well, it's actually a special edition. It's what they call a triple one R. Uh, low owner car, it's basically a demo plus one. It's been garaged most of its life. Uh, 11,000 miles only on it, comes with its silver hard top and well, it's just presented really well, but it's yeah. not been on the road. A lot of these Elises were painted in eye popping primary colours, which at the time, apple green, bright orange, glaring yellow, all that sort of stuff. This one, silver with red leather, it's just, to me, it stood the test of time better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's sort of, yeah. It, it's something that looks as fresh and as modern today and not outdated in any way, shape or form, does it? No. Come on, what's the greatest year? It's 1989, obviously. Not only was I having it very large indeed in Manchester, yes, yeah, stood on a podium in the Hacienda. No better place. This car was mine. It's a 1989 Peugeot 205 GTI and it's not the 1.6, it's the 1.9. Me and my pal John used to go to Mr. Smith's in Warrington. What do you mean you don't remember the Hitman and her? Mr. Smith's in Warrington. And that hottest of all hot hatches was, careful what I say here, it's not 1989, very popular with the female gender. Yeah, what a car. This one has done 153,000 miles. It's not in absolutely tip top condition, but it is super original. And you know what, for a car that's God, is it really 33 years ago? Is it? It can't be! It drives great. Now, the term modern classic is much overused, but let's go and have a look at something over here, which is a 100% bona fide modern classic. Now, Nathan, when I saw this car, when I wandered in, I thought straight away, oh yeah, that'll be one of those cars that's coming from Japan, like so many have. They're always absolutely mint. Lancia Delta Integrales, uh, Lotus Elises, Ferrari 355s, yeah. but can't be Japanese because left-hand drive. What's the story? Yeah, it's uh, Italian import. Uh, 
few years back, I think about 2014, it was imported, MOT'd, ready to be registered. It then got put into a private collection, never registered, parked up. Uh, then the estate that owned the private collection, I'm not sure how it come about, but they all went to auction to be sold. A, a collector that we're very good sort of friends with bought it, he's put it away, never done anything with it. Uh, and it's just literally been under a sheet in a heated room all of its life since it got it. And in all likelihood, this car might get used for the 355 challenge, might it? Yeah, because it, it, it ticks all the boxes. It's left-hand drive, it's manual, and it, it's an excellent starting point for doing that challenge. It's, it's, it's like brand new. It's a remarkable car, isn't it? I, I'll be honest with you, out of the, the three Ferraris that we've got lined up, I always, this is the one I always look at, and that, that's the one that feels the best when you get in it and you, you know, you turn it on and it just, it just feels different for some reason. We've had the best of British. Bella Italia at its finest. Let's have a look at what the Germans have been up to. Let's look at the car, which I think, interested to know if you agree, changed people's perception of performance cars. The Audi RS series, and we've got a lovely pair of RS4s here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, they did, you're right. Uh, we've got two here. This is an earlier model and a later model. They're, they're both 4.2 litres. They're both over 400 brake horsepower. The blue one's 450. Uh, they're four-wheel drive and they're brilliant. They're, they're, five door? Five door, you get all your kids in, you get your dogs in, and you can still chase something like this down the road. Well, that's the thing. People used to buy a Porsche and a Range Rover. But the RS4 is a Porsche and a Range Rover in the same car, isn't it? Precisely, yeah. You, they do everything you want them to do. You've got your four-wheel drive, automatic gearbox. You literally just press your pedal and the horizon starts coming towards you very quickly. Yeah, but you can also take the kids, the missus, the and dogs. the dog. Yeah. Dogs. Everywhere. Wasn't this previously the property of a famous sports yeah, person? Yeah, the, the last owner on the log book is Sandy Lyle. Were there any were there any clubs in the back or tees no, or no, I've been looking for golf balls but I couldn't find any. You must have left them all in a pond. <laughs>